town council meeting for July 6th at 7 p.m. All council members are present. Uh, Councilwoman Renee Williams is joining remotely through, um, through the computer. If everyone would please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Awesome. Before we get rolling, though, I just want to say this is super cool to be back in this room. Um, thanks for everyone's hard work staff-wise to get us back in here in a safe way and following you know, the issued requirements that we have. And um, even though uh, even though there's plenty of people in here who I, th I think don't feel the same way about me, I love you all. And it's so <laughs> great to be in the same room with you again. Um, all right, so just a reminder to you guys watching at home, there's two ways that you're seeing this right now. You're either seeing it through Facebook Live, courtesy of Tom Barr, who's sitting in the back of the room, um, or you're seeing it through our Zoom meeting. I say that because if you're watching it on Facebook Live and you're wanting to make public comment when it's time for on an item, you will need to be in Zoom to make those comments. Facebook is not the place to make the comments when it's time for public comment because that's not where, uh, where it's happening at. It's happening on the Zoom meeting. So Tom is doing his magic and making sure that on Facebook Live people know where that link is um, so they can come in. General public comment has been the new policy is accepted through our website up until 5 p.m. on a council meeting day. You go to parkeronline.org and you could submit your general public comment there and it's disseminated to council. Uh, general public comment are items that, um, that are not addressed. If you're wanting to make comment on an item that's on our agenda, there'll be public comment for that. So, all right, so that's the reminder. We don't have any special presentations, but we do have an update from the Parker Chamber of Commerce. So I do believe Kara's on here and Danette is upstairs working hard and is gonna get Kara turned on and she's gonna give us her update. I'm here if you can hear me. Yes. Awesome, great. Well, thanks so much for having me tonight uh, via this wonderful Zoom platform. Um, I am excited to share with you guys tonight that we have started our Celebrate Membership campaign for the month of July. So we are going out to any of our members who have requested us to come out. We are celebrating them by doing a video. We're going to be um, putting that on social media, marketing their business, telling people that they are open, how they're open, if they have specials going on. We did our first one this morning down at Deep Space with um, Antoinette. It went great. It's on Facebook, so you guys can see our first um, publication of that. So we're really excited just to celebrate all of our members the whole month of July. So that's our biggest campaign right now. Moving forward, we are trying to look at wine walks for the rest of the summer. I'm still not sure how that will look, so we'll keep everyone posted. And we are trying to do some of our other events in parks, like our women's forums, things like that. So um, moving forward well with the chamber. So here just to continue supporting our businesses. So thanks so much. Excellent. Uh, Council, do you have any questions for Kara? It does not appear so. So Kara, thank you very much. Moving on to the next item. It is an update from the Downtown Business Alliance, and I'm not exactly sure who's going to be giving the update. Let's see. Uh, this is Carrie Glassburn. Can you hear me? I can. I just saw Parker Art, so I wasn't sure who was actually there. So uh, rock and roll. It's Carrie. So um, on behalf of the Downtown Business Alliance, I want to thank you, Mayor, and council members and the staff that's there. It's always an honor to be able to present, um, let you know what we're doing each month. I do have a few things, but I'll try to move through them quickly. We do, uh, just for anyone who's listening, let them know that uh, we have our next members meeting. It's via Zoom still, but it's this Wednesday, and we get to hear a presentation from the Parker Symphony Orchestra this month, so we're excited to hear that. Uh, also wanted to thank the mayor and council and staff for helping get the businesses back and reopened up as quickly as possible. Certainly, uh, Mr. Mayor, appreciate the letter that you sent to Governor Polis and also appreciate the town allowing restaurants to expand their um, outside footprint and everything that you did to, to help them out. Um, 
We know that between the town and the DBA, we've been throwing around some ideas of how we could help the businesses. And as you know, one of the ideas was shutting down Main Street Weekly, we had spoken about. And and you've heard that the downtown businesses were actually not in favor of doing that. They had some traffic concerns and a variety of other reasons for it. Uh, so we're no longer pursuing that concept in shutting it down weekly. But uh, however, the DBA does remain open to having occasional closures of Main Street for um, certain large events. So one thing that we are asking town and the town council is that if and when that does happen, that we submit a permit for one of those events, we just ask that you know, you help work uh, to, to move that application process along as quickly as possible. But thank you for, for all your help there. Also been asked to give you a quick update. Some of you have probably heard the news that the West Main Tap Room and Grill uh, did shut down temporarily because one of their employees con uh, contracted the COVID virus. Wanted you to know that management has definitely been following the guidelines from Tri-County Health and the CDC and local health advisors. And so while that affected employee was actually never at work with the symptoms, management uh, felt that it was Closing the business was the right thing to do temporarily to protect both their staff and the public. So ServPro, as we understand it, will be on site tomorrow performing an all-day thorough disinfection of the restaurant. And we're happy to report that the restaurant plans to reopen on Thursday at 11. Uh, also, I believe I briefly saw, I think he's still on their chief store office, but wanted to thank both him and the entire police, uh, Parker Police Department for their uh, professionalism and respect uh, with which they treated really everyone at Black Lives Matter rally recently. And we do believe that it's the town of Parker's community focused approach that really helped keep that event orderly. And we are proud as a downtown business about how Parker was portrayed by the local news outlets. And, and we do feel that we set a really great example for other cities, showed that our residents know how to express their freedoms of speech while respecting rights and beliefs from others. So want to also take a moment to congratulate uh, Mr. Strappas on his recent appointment to chief. Um, next, the downtown board also recently re uh, released a statement thanking Douglas County commissioners for their advocacy during the COVID shutdown. We know that they helped push the variants through as well, and we appreciate it. So DBA did make an official statement, and so wanted everyone here to know that any statement that is made officially by DBA um, regarding this or uh the, the recent rally, anything that we do can be found always on the blog uh, at www.downtownparker.com backslash blog, if any of you want to read them in full. Um, just a couple other things. After everyone finally um, came out of their hole after quarantine, the DBA did go back to doing their annual or their annual, their monthly trash cleanup. So we sponsor Pine Drive and we hadn't done it, one, because of the winter months and then two, because of quarantine. And it wasn't nearly as bad as we'd expected due to the snow and, and with all the wind, we thought it would be crazy, but I think it must have all blown into Centennial maybe because it wasn't too bad. Uh, so we have that, another one planned uh, July 18th and we're going to continue to do those trash pickups every month, really until it starts snowing again. And then last thing is just to let you know that today we concluded a, a marketing campaign that we had going on for the downtown businesses. It was called Hometown Holiday, and uh, it, it went on for a couple of weeks leading up to the July 4th weekend. Uh, we encouraged patrons to visit one of the 80 downtown businesses, and they, they got to take a selfie with them, uh, well, with themselves, that would probably be pretty self-explanatory, but uh, they would post it. They would tag downtown Parker on social media, and then they were entered to win one of three $25 gift cards that, that we were offering to downtown businesses. So that drawing is taking place later on, and that's really just the beginning of some of the marketing efforts that we're doing as a downtown business board to really help create awareness for the businesses and try to drive traffic to these to this destination of downtown Parker. So we hope to do more digital marketing and run some other promotions in, in the future to help get those businesses back up on their feet. So that's all I have for this month. So I want to thank you as always for the opportunity to get in front of town council and um, 
That's all I have, unless you have questions. Carrie, thank you very much. Council, do you have any questions for Carrie? Nope. Okay. And, and Renee, I can see you. So if you ever have them, just like shake your head or wave your arms or, or whatever. There we go. All right, Carrie, thank you very much. All right. Thank you. All right, next up uh, is public comment. As I mentioned earlier, general public comment. To submit that, you go to the town's website, parkeronline.org, by 5 p.m. the day of our meeting, and it'll be disseminated to council. Um, next item up, we're going to go ahead and skip reports items from mayor and council, just other, except that we're all happy to be back in the real. So let's jump right into next item is our consent agenda. Consent agenda items are considered to be routine, will be enacted with one motion and one vote, unless there is a council member that asks to have something removed for further discussion. Ordinances on the consent agenda are for introduction only and will not be removed. So council in front of you, you have consent agenda items 7A through 7D. I move to, uh, Jeez, I forgot my motions. <laughs> His voice was all raspy. He hasn't done it in person in so long. I move to approve consent items, items 7A through 7D. D. Thank you. From Renee. We have a motion from Josh and a second from Renee. Council, your uh, vote window should pop up here for you to vote. And let's see if the internet breaks. Motion passes unanimously. Next item up is item eight. This is resolutions. This is resolution number Mike, two. Public comment. Oh, we we already I announced it already. Oh, you did? Yeah. I'm you weren't sorry. paying attention. I, I apologize. Okay. Thanks, John. I just. Thanks, John. It's okay. I saw somebody up there who yeah. I thought needed. Um, resolution number two zero dash zero one nine. This is a resolution to approve the settlement agreement Vista South. Kristen, you're going to lead us through this. Thank you, Mayor and Council. Vista South LLC and Mountain Way South Metro LLC uh, own two lots within the Grassland Prairie Trail Plan Development Area. Uh, the town annexed and zoned that property. In April 2018, Vista South, those two parties, filed a civil action challenging the annexation and zoning of the property. In October 2019, the Douglas County District Court issued an order approving the annexation but invalidating the zoning on the property. Both the town and the Vista South parties appealed the order of the, of, to the Colorado Court of Appeals. The town and the Vista South parties now desire to settle the lawsuit based on the terms that validate the annexation and zoning of the property, which will allow Vista South to develop the property in a manner allowed by the zoning. Attached to the resolution is the settlement agreement. If it's approved, the lawsuit will be dismissed. The order will be vacated. The appeal will also be dismissed and the town will be released from all liability related to the lawsuit. Uh, here tonight I have litigation counsel, Corey Hoffman. He's available to answer any questions. And I also believe on our Zoom tonight are representatives from the parties and other interested and related parties that may also want to comment to counsel on the settlement agreement. Okay, before we see if there's, see if there's any comments from those um, on, counsel, do you have any questions for Kristen? Okay, seeing none. Um, all right, so if there is one of the parties, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them listed here who would like to comment. Um, they can raise their hand before we go to public comment. Okay, and I'm not seeing any there. I don't want to speed through it in case I'm missing something, but I don't see anyone raising. Oh, wait, wait, whoop, whoop. I just saw a hand go up. Or, nope, I saw a hand go away. All right. So with, with none of them giving comment, we'll go ahead and move to public comment. I just want to go through the rules for public comment. We'll open it up at 7.14 p.m., which you can't see if you're looking on here um, because we don't have our, our timer turned on. There's a three-minute time limit. Um, for each member for public comment. This is specific to this item at hand in front of you. Um, you will state your name and address for the record, uh, and then I will start the timer. Since you can't see my timer, I'll give you kind of a 30 second, hey, you got 30 seconds left uh, before the three minutes are up. So if there's anyone here wanting public comment on this item, go ahead and raise your hand in the Zoom meeting, and I will call on you. Okay, and I'm 
Not seeing any hands being raised. I can't believe, I mean, there's people there that are pertinent to the case that wouldn't probably want to speak. They're not, <laughs> I'm looking at the attendee list and I'm seeing no hands being raised. Panelist list, no hands being raised. All right, then we'll close public comment at 7.15 p.m. And I would entertain further discussion, council, or a motion, please. I move to approve resolution number 20-019. Second. We have a motion from Josh, and we have a second from John. Council, your window will pop open here in just a sec. Please vote. I'm hearing some audio f through the system. Mm. Can you talk? See if I hear you. Oh. Yeah. Can anyone hear me? Okay, so that so Lin So that's someone named Linda who's in. Oh no, she just went on mute. Okay, that's who was unmuted. All right, did everybody vote? Apparently, I might have forgot to press save. <laughs> and motion passes unanimously. Move on to our next item. Can we take a recess to do a little dance? To do a little dance. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be later. Um, move on to our next item. I'm number nine. Um, council, so 9A has four parts, so I'm going to read them all in. Be patient. There will be one presentation, but there will be four different motions and votes on it. So this is... 9A, Parker and Pine Rezone Minor Development Plat and Subdivision Agreement. Uh, A1 is Ordinance Number 3.193.4 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance amending Ordinance Number 3.193, Series of 2002, by the deletion of certain property from the PD plan development known as Parker Auto Plaza. A2 is ordinance number 3.355 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance rezoning certain property within the town of Parker, Colorado, commonly known as the Parker and Pine property to PD plan development pursuant to Parker land development ordinances and amending the zoning ordinance and map to conform therewith. Item A3 is the minor development plat and item A4 is the subdivision agreement. And Carolyn, you are going to walk us through the whole procedure. And then you got to unmute yourself. There you go. As soon as I unmute myself. There you go. <laughs> uh, good evening, uh, council and mayor. This evening, the applicant is requesting a rezone and replat of a portion of the Parker Auto Plaza subdivision. The applicant is Kim Lee Horn, and the representative is Dan Skihan. The applicant is present to answer any questions the council might have, and will also have a presentation of their own following staff's report. The applicant has demonstrated that all public notice requirements have been met. Slide, please. The site is located on the southwest corner of Parker Road and Pine Lane. The applicant is proposing to rezone and replat Parker Auto Plaza Filing 1, Block 3, Lot 1. The proposal will delete the subject property from the Parker Auto Plaza plan development and create a new PD called Parker and Pine Mixed Use Development. The property will be replatted into Parker and Pine Minor Development. Slide, please. This map illustrates the proposed uses. The purple shaded areas shown here are the commercial areas, while the blue shaded area is the multifamily tract inclusive of the internal roadway network. The current PD contains building setback criteria that hinder the development of this important corner. The proposed PD has new setback requirements that better align with the town's new development design standards. Additionally, the current PD does not permit residential uses. The new PD will update the list of permitted commercial uses to accommodate and promote retail, restaurant, and service uses, and will also establish development design standards enforceable through an architectural control committee 
and the town site plan process. These development standards complement the town's design standards and ensure cohesiveness and compatibility throughout the development. The multifamily residential component represents less than one half of the property and is located adjacent to the Baldwin Gulch Trail and open space, providing a buffer between the commercial and the more sensitive open space. The mix of uses is a good example of the mixed use concept and will provide incentive to further commercial development nearby. The residential development supports new commercial and will encourage activation of this site, creating a strong commercial presence along these two major roadways. This PD is designed to provide a balance of uses and trade-offs that promote higher quality commercial use along Parker Road, preclude some of the inappropriate uses currently permitted by the Parker Auto Plaza PD, and support mixed use development in the 20 mile road corridor, which is an emerging mixed use area. Slide please. The property is located at the intersection of Parker Road and Pine Lane, providing excellent connections to major transportation corridors, such as E-470 and Parker Road. Access into the development will be provided from existing access points on Parker Road, Pine Lane, and 20 Mile Road, creating a north-south, east-west interior traffic grid for efficient and safe circulation within the development. The MDP will create six commercial lots and one tract intended, intended for future multifamily development. That tract includes the internal roadway network that will serve both the commercial lots and the multifamily development. These private roads will provide vehicular and pedestrian connectivity between uses and will be maintained by the owner's association. Slide please. This site contains 15.925 acres and is currently vacant. There are no existing 100 year floodplains or existing creeks or gulches within the boundaries of the development. Connectivity to the local and regional trail system is directly adjacent via Baldwin Gulch Trail, shown here in red. Per the subdivision improvement agreement, a pedestrian connection to Baldwin Gulch Trail is required within Tract A. That's the multifamily track. The specific location will be determined at time of site plan, but will likely be located within the area highlighted here in yellow. The development is located adjacent to an improved bus stop shown here in the inset. This stop is in close proximity to E470 and town commercial areas, supporting alternative transportation services as is recommended in the master plan. Next slide, please. Prairie dog mitigation has taken place on the site. The applicant has stated compliance with state regulations regarding the removal of the prairie dogs. Uh, and the applicant has provided a letter regarding mit mitigation, which was included in the commissioner's packets. Going forward, any additional mitigation on the project, project will be subject to the requirements of the new ordinance. Slide please. Adjacent properties are either currently in commercial use or are vacant properties zoned for commercial use. Improvements to Pine Lane have created alternative connections to and from the commercial core of town, providing an opportunity to expand the town's commercial development. This project provides an opportunity to further the economic goals within the Parker 2035 master plan with construction of new commercial development. Slide please. The site is located within the central commercial district character area of the master plan. The master plan recommends that due to its central location, growth in this character area should focus on core retail, services, offices, lodging, restaurants, entertainment, and to a lesser extent, higher density residential uses as part of a development with a mix of uses and a design that focuses on vehicular and pedestrian connectivity. The proposed rezone is consistent with the master plan recommendation for land use in the central commercial district. Slide please. 
The uses, density, and overall design considerations recommended for the Central Commercial District are consistent with the proposed PD and with the nine approval criteria for rezoning requests. The applicant has demonstrated compliance with the requirements of the Land Development Ordinance and all other relevant regulatory documents for a minor development plat. Slide, please. <coughs> On June 11, 2020, the Planning Commission voted 7-0 to zero to recommend approval for the Parker and Pine Rezone and Minor Development Plat. The applicant is requesting a rezone that will update commercial uses and add multifamily residential as an allowed use. Additionally, a minor development plat will create six commercial lots and one tract. The applicant has demonstrated that the proposal is consistent with the master plan and is compliant with the land development ordinance for a minor development plat. Therefore, the Planning Commission and staff are recommending that Town Council approve the Parker and Pine Mixed Use Development Guide and Plan with no conditions and the Parker and Pine Minor Development Plat with a single condition that will ensure the satisfaction of a few minor technical elements for engineering. That condition reads as follows. <clears throat> Prior to recordation, the applicant will satisfy all engineering comments related to SUB 18-020. This concludes staff's report. In the interest of efficiency and with the council's permission, staff will return to questions after the applicant has completed their presentation. All right, thank you, Carolyn. So we'll go ahead and ask the applicant Danette, if you can turn the applicant on. Good evening, can you guys hear me? Yes. If you could just state your name and address for the record, please. Sure, good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, my name is Ryan Amato, A-M-A-T-O. Address is 2710 East Camelback Road, Phoenix, Arizona. 85016. I am here tonight to represent EVT Parker, Colorado, uh, care of Eisenberg Company. So quick background, we are a commercial development company uh, which focuses on sustainable uh, mixed use projects that are aligned with the goals of the community. In the Denver metropolitan area, we currently have developed and own developments in Broomfield, uh, Jefferson County, Aurora and Parker. Uh, we pride ourselves on considering ideas and comments from residents and municipalities and integrating those ideas into our plans in order to create a neighborhood that reflects the character and sense of place uh, of the community. So I am joined tonight by my team, Dan Skian, uh, who is our civil engineer with Kinley Horn, uh, Bill Mahar, who is our planner with Norris Design, and my architect, Jordan Bonicelli at Naos Design. First of all, I would, uh, I would like to thank the town of Parker staff for their assistance throughout this project, specifically Carolyn Parkinson and Bryce Matthews. Um, we have been working diligently with the town of Parker staff for over three years uh, in order to refine this development application in order to align with the policies and goals of the town of Parker. And our highly visible site at the intersection of Parker and Pine uh, as many may know, has been zoned for 20 plus years for large scale uses, uh, including automotive sales. The site has remained vacant, even with the presence of surrounding development infrastructure and roads, uh, which has resulted in a site that is not effectively contributing to the tax base of the town of Parker or improving the appeal of Parker Road. Uh, and so uh, uh, through discussions with staff, a mixed use approach to the site was brought forth for consideration for the addition of multifamily uses, which is consistent with emerging multifamily developments that have recently been approved to the north across Pine Lane. And this mix of uses is compatible with the goals of the town master plan for this area, as Carolyn mentioned. And I hope that you will consider our long history with the site and know that we have made every effort to create a project that will complement the town's strategy to create something Parker can be proud of. And so we come before you tonight with a thoroughly thought out land use plan that both staff and my team support. Thank you. Okay. All right, so go ahead, do we, 
Do you have an actual presentation or you just wanted to give comment? Yeah, so um, we do have uh, a PowerPoint that I'll pass this off over to, I think, Bill Maher. Okay. Yes, if you could pull up slide three, please. Okay, Danette, can you go ahead and switch over to the slides? We're working out the bugs, folks. No problem. <laughs> All right, Danette, can you flip that over? Danette's who's got control and she's not, there we go. Danette, Danette's the, the ringleader. Wonderful, thank you. If you could go to slide three, please. Good evening, Mayor and members of Town Council. My name is Bill Maher with Norris Design and I'm part of the project team. I'm happy to be here tonight to bring this, these two land use applications that have been under review for the past two years to you tonight. This rezoning and minor development plot has been a collaboration with city staff to support the town's vision for mixed use at this site and help realize the vision for uh, the Parker Road corridor, which you've been working on for many years. As Ryan alluded to, uh, we, this site has been zoned for development for over 20 years, and we're excited to bring a new look on it with the new zoning on this site. We strongly believe the rezoning will result in development that aligns, that is in more in line with the town's goals and where you're moving today. And here are a few factors that support this, such as the, the prime location at Pine and Parker Road. It's a major gateway into your community, um, a highly visible location, and we've been working hand in hand with staff on it. Next slide, please. And a few other components that we want to bring to your attention. Uh, the site, as Carolyn pointed out, has great access to your open spaces. Cherry Creek uh, um, bike path to the west and open space, the Baldwin Gulch to the south. Um, the strong pedestrian connectivity within this area of Parker and the access to many goods and services that will support a mixed use uh, development, such as the hospital and grocery and many other um, services. And there's also emerging mixed use happening to the northwest of this site, the depot at 20 Mile and West Creek condominiums that are under construction right now. Next slide. As Ms. Ms. Parkinson um, noted in her staff presentation, uh, this application for rezone and um, development plat uh, aligns very well with your town policies. The 2035 master plan, the Parker Road corridor study, and your zoning criteria. And we believe we're going above and beyond uh, the zoning criteria with this application. Next slide. And in summary, the development will ensure high quality design standards uh, really improve the aesthetic appeal of Parker and Pine and add to the and con contribute to what is happening within that corridor too, such as the hospital to the northeast and many other developments that are under construction and provide a need for mixed use at this great location and housing that will serve a wide range of the population. Next slide. And we're happy to answer any questions you may have. Thank you for your time and consideration tonight. All right. Awesome. Um, Carolyn, do you have anything else to add before we go to qu questions from council? No, I'm happy to take any questions you might have. All right. Thank you very much. Council, this is the time for questions to both Carolyn and the applicant. If anyone has any, I'm looking. Jeff. Carolyn, I just have a couple. Carolyn. Quick, what, into the microphone a little bit more. Uh, there you go. Um, when you mentioned in your presentation some of the highly inappropriate uses of the current zoning, what, what were those uses? <laughs> Did she say highly inappropriate or just inappropriate? Because I kind of like highly inappropriate. That makes it sound. I heard highly inappropriate. <laughs> I, <don't... laughs> I usually hear that, but in a different context. Um, so. Let's go with less desirable. <laughs> okay. Um, this is an old PD. It's been around for a while. And so there are a lot of uses provided in it that really aren't appropriate for such a visible corner. Uh, and so such trying as, to such uh, as. align the allowed uses more with our current design standards, uh, this PD has re, uh, redone the allowed uses for commercial uh, in a way that I think does align better with our 
design standards. What were some of those uses that were that were allowed before that would not be allowed? Um. Well, I don't know, Bryce. Can you help me out with this one a little bit? Uh, sure, I, haven't, sure. I haven't looked at that PD for a while. Yeah, glad to. Um, there were a number of large assembly uses uh, permitted. There were a number of um, uses uh, that um, kind of like automobile sales were permitted within there. Uh, major auto repair types uses were permitted in there. And again, as Carolyn mentioned, uses that didn't really align with what uh, the town had envisioned for that prominent location. Okay, so Bryce, continue on though. Um, so the the site plan has approximately fifty percent of this is for multifamily. So what what number of multifamily units could be put on what would be eight acres? So it's a little bit less actually than fifty percent, and the maximum number. Of so what is units what is the number of acres? What is what's the number? Uh, I'm not eight point something. Um, but the the uh, number of units that can be on that lot or that tract is 175 maximum total, which aligns with about 22 DUs per acre, which is, I think, what was discussed. Jeff, do you have another question? I do. So, so for the developer, did did you all consider? Because you know the the. The problem is I, I agree with your commentary on allowing for uh, improving, improving the tax base, but putting multifamily on there does not improve the tax base. So did you, as a part of your um, creation of the site plan, did you consider more commercial back there where the multifamily was to, to achieve the goal of improving the tax base? Yeah, so this, this is Ryan. Um, I would add that we have owned this project. Um, the site was mass graded in 2002 um, and prepared for commercial development uh, then, long before, obviously, we owned it. Um, in the four years, plus or minus, that we've owned it, we have hired uh, retail brokers. We've had office brokers, medical office brokers. Um, we've had every facet of commercial real estate um, professionals, try, including ourselves, uh, chase every product we possibly could for the balance of the site. And we understand that at this point, a mixed use project is actually gonna be much more productive for both us and the town of Parker. Okay, Jeff, another question? Cheryl. Yes, yeah, so I have a couple of questions. One is what is the height limit on this parcel for the uh, structures, Carolyn? So the maximum height is 45 feet, but it's um, less in the, along the 20 mile road. So any, uh, any multifamily buildings that might be along 20 mile road would have to be uh, restricted to uh, two stories. What about Pine Lane and Parker Road? Because that far exceeds neighboring properties. It's commercial. Well, this tract actually isn't along either of those roads. There's commercial in between. I understand that. What is the height limit on the commercial? Oh, I'm sorry. The height limit on the, I believe it's also 35. Which is higher than any of the neighboring properties. The other question I had was, when you're looking at the multifamily, we're, um, somewhat interested in the uh, for purchase options. Have you looked at that and why have you not selected that at this point? So I don't believe we've selected or not selected that at this point. Uh, the developer um, may have a Cheryl, let, let, her, let, her, let her answer you. This Go is ahead, a tract Cheryl. at this point. So I don't have uh, any sort of an application or submittal um, that describes even the layout much less whether it will be typically for sale or rent. The other thing is, of course, that we, we are unable to stipulate that specifically. That's, that's not allowed. Not so Ryan, different. could you give any insight then for Council Member Pogue on that? If I could, I'd find my unmute button. Okay. Um, yeah, so, so really the biggest hurdle that we face 
is getting the project rezoned for the particular use. And then once that happens, we can go to find what ends up being there. Preliminarily, um, we have found that a for sale product um, is not as desirable as a for rent product in terms of the uh, level of interest that we receive. And uh, But again, uh, to Carolyn's point, uh, we just don't know ultimately where it ends up. Okay. Cheryl, did you have another question? No, thank you. Josh? Um, just to, to remind council, previous council um, seated, passed a bill that all future um, multifamily buildings will be condo mapped so the owners of those buildings can in the future decide to condominiumize. They absolutely are willing to. Okay. Any other questions? Renee, I can't see your face because it's kind of moved off of here. Do you? I, if you have a question, Renee, unmute yourself and ask. No question. Thank you. No question. All right. Well, then with that, we're going to go ahead and move to, Yeah, I mean, oh, John, did you have one? No, well, I, I mean, I think it's more of a statement. It's, you know, I, I think this is a, you know, as, as the questions have, um, have been asked, I think it's a very challenging site. Um, we, we view it as being large and on a corner that uh, is, is pretty, you know, I guess important, if you will, or at the, at the gateway, I've, I've, I've heard that term. Um, you know, we, um, I guess I, uh, would would prefer that um, we, we we get some retail commercial mix um, you know based on the discussions again the entire council here has had in September um, in order to get that um, we have the um, we have the agenda item that is is in front of us so to get uh, to get those restaurants to get those retail activities um, you know we, we have to take a little bit of a leap of faith and and um, you know, consider this this plan or this proposal, and you know, I mean, to me, is is getting um, retail commercial on the front um, worth it? I mean, I think that's that's one of the questions. But again, if if that was a, a um, an issue or a concern, um, you know, I th I think we should have had a, a a fuller, more robust discussion back in September uh, when we were providing staff with some guidance so we can. Um, have a discussion with applicant. Thank you. Okay. All right. So with that, we're going to go ahead and move to public comment. And just to go over the kind of rules and structure, Tom, I know uh, Tom Barr in the back. Now we've got the uh, the timer up above me turned on. So I'm hoping people at home can see that. There's a three minute time limit on there. I've got the master clicker that will start and stop the timer. <laughs> He's watching me. He's not going to let it happen. You can't see. You can't see. That doesn't, all right. So I'll still. I can see it, but I'll still call out thirty min, or excuse me, thirty seconds before to before three minutes is up. So if you are in attendance and are would like to discuss this item, I can see that we already have one hand raised. All you'll do is do exactly that. Raise your hand. I will call on you. Um, when you begin, you will have uh, state your name and address for the record, and then I will start the timer. So we've got. I'm going to apologize for just totally butchering your name, Saban Cox. Um, go ahead, and if Danette, if you can unmute. Good evening. Yes, Siobhan go. Cox, 42943 Vista Ridge Road, Parker. Thank you. Go right ahead. Thank you. In Mr. Amato's letter regarding the property's prairie dogs attached to tonight's agenda, he said that the Eisenberg Company had met the requirements of the Prairie Dog Ordinance before they were even proposed. I do agree that Mr. Amato and Jason Eisenberg communicated with Prairie Dog advocates in 2018 and did seem willing to allow a relocation. Regrettably, there was no communication either direction in 2019 prior to the use of fumatoxin on their property on November 15, 2019 although we were monitoring the status of the project on the town's website. The fumatoxin killed off most of what had been a large, healthy, and active colony of native Colorado wildlife. Fumatoxin, or phosphine as it's also known, is inhumane and not permitted under the ordinance. So I would have to disagree with the contention that the Eisenberg Company was in compliance with the entire ordinance prior to its passage. In late February of this year, I called Mr. Amato to ask if the Eisenberg Company would allow us to try to relocate the relatively few remaining survivors. On February 28th, 
Mr. Amato left me a voicemail, which I listened to again today. He concluded by saying that if I thought there were an opportunity for relocation, the Eisenberg company didn't oppose it. I responded by voicemail on March 2nd saying, thank you, we would pursue it. However, less than two weeks later on March 11th, the company Animal and Pest Control Specialist was sent back out to use fumatoxin on their surviving prairie dogs. March 11th was, in fact, the day before the ordinance, the prairie dog ordinance, was put before the Parker Planning Commission. The March 11th poisoning was done in an egregiously shoddy and irresponsible manner. Suffering and dying prairie dogs, as well as dead prairie dogs, were left above ground within feet of the sidewalk around the property, posing a danger to other wildlife, family dogs, and people. To this day, I am at a loss to understand how we got from Mr. Amato's voicemail of February 28th to the scene on March 11th, witnessed by several people. I know that the Eisenberg Company is not required to comply with the ordinance with regard to these applications. I am requesting, however, that Mr. Amato agree to comply with the ordinance, specifically that he allow Prairie Dog advocates to see if there is any possible way to relocate. 30 seconds left. Excuse me? You have 30 seconds left. Thank you. Um, that he allow prairie dog advocates to see if there's any possible way to relocate the few remaining prairie dogs living on the property. That he agree that they will not have the prairie dogs killed by any means until development is truly imminent, say a month out. And that if the Eisenberg company eventually does conclude that there is no other choice but to remove the prairie dogs through killing them, that they will agree not to use phosphine, Eumatoxin or any other inhumane poison. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, next up for public comment, if there's someone else wanting to speak, go ahead and use your raise hand feature. Okay, so we've got Linda. Go ahead and Linda, um, we'll unmute you. Go ahead and state your name and address for the record and then I'll start the timer. Okay, or let's see, Linda, you're still muted. Oh, oh there we go. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. Go ahead and state your oh, name okay. and address for the record, please. Okay. Uh, Linda Wilson, 11443 East Regency Court, Parker. Thank you. Go right ahead. Okay. I would like to address Mr. Amato's statement, quote, that they have always been willing to work with advocacy groups on their efforts for removal of prairie dogs, and we have exhausted all other efforts over the last year and a half, end quote. On December 12, 2017, I sent an email to Mr. Amato asking him if he would consider relocating the prairie dogs on this property if land was available to us. I left two phone messages in January 2018 since I had no response to my December email. He called me on January 15, 2018. We had a long conversation. I asked him if he'd be willing to pay for relocation. He said it depends on if it's $5,000 versus $50,000. We talked about humanely killing prairie dogs with carbon monoxide versus poison. He said his family were animal lovers and they enjoyed watching the prairie dogs. Told him I would find out the answers to his questions and get back with him. On January 25th, 2018, I contacted Deanna Meyer, got my answers to his questions. On April 11th, 2018, I sent an email to Mr. Amato with follow-up answers. On June 13th, 2018, I emailed Mr. Amato that I had been told by the town that the site plan had been withdrawn from the property. Did that mean the prairie dogs were safe for another year? That same day, I got an email back from Mr. Amato, which stated, quote, we are still working with the town for site plan approval I don't know when that will occur, but we can discuss how to handle the prairie dogs when we get further along, end quote. Based upon that email, I thought we would be contacted before any extermination or grading was to take place. In 2019 and 2020, we are monitoring the development tour map through the Town of Parker website to check the monthly status of the property. It was always saying revisions required, which we thought was giving us time to look for relocation sites, and we were told also it would probably be a year out as far as grading. We had no warning from the Eisenberg Company that they decided to poison hundreds of the prairie dogs when they had implied via email slash phone conversations that they were interested in relocation. Unfortunately, this poisoning happened in November 2019. There's still no development. I would also like to move forward in a positive manner and have the town and the Eisenberg Company go on record with complying with the prairie dog ordinance from this point forward. We'd also like uh, time to pursue relocation, possibly passive relocation, and if that is not possible, to not have the remaining few prairie dogs killed with any type of poison, including phosphine or fumatoxin again. You have Thank 30 you. seconds left, Linda. 
Well, I'm done. Oh, okay. Right. Well, you had a little buffer there. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Linda. All right. If yeah. there's anyone else on here for public comment, please use the raise your hand feature. Okay. Going once. Going twice. Okay, we'll go ahead and close public comment at 7.50 p.m. Council, I would entertain, you got four, you have four items in front of you. I'd entertain further discussion or motions on each item separately. Can we get uh, oh. further, dis I mean, uh, a further explanation on um, the applicant and the, the potential, um, how they would comply from, from staff, please? Sure, absolutely. Um, Kristen, would you like to elaborate for for Councilman Dyack and those watching at home going forward what happens and how it applies to our Prairie Dog Ordinance? I'd actually ask the planning probably respond to that. I can tell you that applicate, any sort of further applications like grading permits uh, on the property would need to comply with the ordinance. This application uh, was in process before the Prairie Dog Ordinance was adopted, so they were not required to comply with it. But any any future applications would have to comply with it, and it would re and it requires uh, that the app it encourages relocation and then requires um, humane methods of extermination. If I'm remembering the ordinance correctly, it's been a little while since I looked at it, but I'm guessing. If Bryce is still on or Carolyn, uh, they could probably address the requirements and more specifically uh, the Prairie Dog uh, Ordinance. Well, Carolyn, I'll go ahead and ask you if you could, if you could unmute yourself just for edification of for council and those around. If council approves what's in front of them tonight, what are the other steps? What are the other applications that have to happen before there's actually a project? in the ground and would those future applications from what Kristen is saying would they uh, Eisenberg would have to comply with the current town prairie dog code is that correct that is correct mayor they would have to any additional mitigation on the property will be subject to the requirements of the ordinance uh, as far as what goes next um, the preliminary site plan is submitted and is still under consideration. Uh, once that is approved, each site, each uh, lot will undergo a final site plan. Um, it's hard to say how long that will take, whether one will come in right away or whether it'll be six months down the road. But the first thing that would happen is a grading permit, and we can certainly um, prevent a grading permit from being issued until the applicant has submitted the required certification that the requirements have been met. Okay, and, and in basic terms, without a grading permit, the land doesn't get graded and a project doesn't happen? That is correct. Okay. John, does that satisfy your question? Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to understand that uh, our, our new ordinance uh, is compliant. If, if it was not compliant, uh, then we, we could consider an adjustment to the proposed motion. Okay. Thank you. Other questions, comments? I would just, uh, John Fusa chimed, just chimed in. Maybe he has a word to say. John, were you coming in to add something or were you just messing around with your camera? Uh, Mayor, not messing around. I was, in case it was follow up uh, to Carolyn Parkinson's response, I was just unmuting to answer, but mm -hmm. Carolyn did a fine job answering it and she nailed it. The next major permit would likely be the grading permit and uh, an application for grading permit and approval of that permit will trigger the need to comply with the Prairie Dog Management Ordinance that's recently adopted. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, other questions, comments? I just have a comment. I just want to give kudos to, uh, to both sides, uh, to, to uh, Ryan and his team, and then mostly, obviously, to our staff. Um, just outstanding uh, negotiations on both sides. I think there was give and take um, in both columns. And I'm happy to, uh, to say uh, that I believe that this project is, is, a, is a compromise, and I am glad to see this, this gateway piece, as, as John put it, um, get some commercial that is right up front and not a huge parking lot. So kudos to everybody involved. Okay. With that, I move to approve ordinance number 3.193.4 on second reading. Second. Okay, we have a motion from Josh and a second from Debbie. Council, in just a sec, your window will pop open for your vote. Okay. 
The suspense. We waiting on anybody? Cheryl? Cheryl? I haven't gotten it up. No. I'll vote no. Okay, motion passes four to two with two no votes from Jeff Toborg and Cheryl Pogue. We have another item in front of you. Uh, I move to approve ordinance number 3.355 on second reading. Second. We have a motion from Josh and we have a second from Debbie. Council, in just a sec, the box should pop up for you. In fact, Chris, give me a thumbs up when the box should pop up so everyone will know. Is everyone's box popped open? Okay. Motion passes four to two with the two no votes being Jeff Toborg and Cheryl Pogue. We've got another item, number A3. I move to approve Parker and Pine minor development plats subject to the condition contained in the staff report. One, prior to Recordation, the applicant will satisfy all engineering comments related to sub 18-020. Second. We have a motion by Josh and a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes four to two with no votes from Jeff Toborg and Cheryl Pogue. And the last item there, A4. I move to approve the subdivision agreement for Parker and Pine minor development filing, number one. Second. Motion by Josh and a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes four to two with no votes from Jeff Toborg and Cheryl Pogue. Next item up on our agenda is item 10A. This is ordinance number 9.318 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance approving the intergovernmental agreement regarding the community development block grant program for, first, for fiscal years to 2021 through 2023, administered by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, by and between the Board of County Commissioners of the County of Douglas, State of Colorado, and the Town of Parker. Jamie, you are going to lead the way once, the, once everything gets set for you there, right? It's a whole new world. It's a whole new world we're in. <laughs> All Good right, you evening. are, I am going to ask a favor, though. Sure. If you can pull the microphone real, real Absolutely. close to you. Because even though we can hear you, no one at home can unless it's close to you. All right. Good evening, Mayor and Council. I am here to ask for a town council to approve Ordinance 9.318 to approve the intergovernmental agreement with Douglas County for the Community Development Block Grant Program. Town of Parker previously was in an IGA with Douglas County for a CDBG program, but opted out in June of 2016. Recently, we were given the ability to qualify as a metropolitan city based on our population, but we have also been given the opportunity to work with Douglas County through this program. The program has changed significantly since we opted out in June of 2016. And there are a number of benefits for the town in opting into this program and a number of different financial incentives to do so. We are asking that town council approve this IGA and that we join with Douglas County to pursue the CDBG program. Okay. Thank you very much. Council, do you have any questions for Jamie? I do. Cheryl, go ahead. What are the reasons for opting in? The reasons for opting in is the financial benefits to the town. And, and what is that specifically? There is over, um, I believe it's close to $200,000 that the town would get through the program to use for various programs, which include nonprofit programs, which include aid to different individuals. It includes the ability to provide for new housing for individuals coming into the town of Parker. It will also potentially open up financial opportunities through the CARES Act, through the COVID response from the federal government for additional fundage. And what is what are the requirements for opting in? 
the requirements. So the requirements are still being determined, but there has been a new regulation put out for the Affordable Fair Housing Act. Um, those, in, that information has opened up the opportunity for the town working with Douglas County to provide an action plan, and that action plan can focus on the opportunities that we want to pursue through the town. Jeff. Thank you. So, Jamie, once, so as I understand it, though, this is administered by HUD at the federal level. So once we opt in, we are, we are opt in for that fiscal year. HUD and the federal government can change the rules as we go through the fiscal year, but we cannot opt out. Correct. The Correct. opt in is for the fiscal years of 2021 through 2023. Okay. So we have to opt in for that time period. Up to, we have to, for three years, Correct. opt in. So if we have a change in the administration, a change in the uh, government, we are still bound by that for three years while the federal government can change the rules at any time. Correct. Okay. The funds that we receive, however, we can utilize them for what we want to. If the regulations change, we may not have to accept those funds and they can go elsewhere. Okay. But we don't know. It. Today, if you if you enumerated the goals of the, um, of the program, of the funds, we don't know what those goals would be. Those are yet to be determined. So we have to opt into uncertainty the goals on a lot of levels correct the goals have not been determined the consolidated plan has not been determined that will be in conjunction with douglas county and the other individuals i believe castle pines and lone tree are both looking at opting into an intergovernmental agreement okay thank you okay other questions john jamie what are the um i guess penalties or um i mean i'm i'm, I'm listening to council member toborg and it, 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 it feels like that there's, there's something potentially out there ominous that could happen if rules are changed. I mean, could, could, you, could you even begin to guess, or is there some kind of case study in the past that you could sort of provide to council to articulate maybe why, why we shouldn't accept what I would call free money from the federal government? And, and I, I know that there are, there are agreements in place, and there are consolidated plans we have to achieve. Uh, we, we've got to create and put together with the county and implement. But is is there anything out there that that could be um, rather challenging for for the town of Parker to to embrace? And I could start off if John Fuse is still on. He may have more insight since he's dealt with a number of these programs in the past. But with respect to what is, in a lot of ways, free money, yes, there are considerations, there are compliance requirements that we have to engage in. But the reason that we opted out was because the federal government, in some ways, it felt like it was overstepping its bounds and digging its fingers too much into the town of Parker. That became such a big issue for numerous entities involved in this program that that's why I believe they've stepped back and completely, they didn't even implement the last plan. They revoked that completely. They've looked at redoing all of this, and I think they understood what was necessary for individual municipalities to achieve the affordable fair housing, the different nonprofit organizations for those individual entities to make it the best for those specific towns, cities, whatever the entity would be. So my hope would be based on their past experience and how poorly that went for them, that while you never know what's going to happen in an election year, that it wouldn't go back to the reasons that we pulled from the program initially. It seems to me that we are asked to be opting into something we may not have final control over. We don't know what the options are. And if we don't opt in, we'll, you know, we don't have an opportunity. But if we opt in, we still don't know what we're opting into. And that on some level is true. However, it is money that we are provided by opting in. And by not opting in, we aren't entitled to that money, but we don't end up having to take it. If we don't want it, the funds can be redistributed. Josh. If we don't take the money, then the obligation on our side, whatever those crazy obligations that may come down the pipeline, we are not obligated if we do not take the money, correct? Correct. However, we still have affordable fair housing that we have to comply with under federal requirements. This is just additional requirements and additional money. Renee, did you have a question? I, I saw you move and I didn't know if, no? I Debbie, think John did you have? up too. No, okay. So just question for me or just, I guess, more clarification because there is a, another change since the last time this came up. Parker last time was too small to be a direct recipient of, of CDBG funds. And in the past, for all the years that 
the town of Parker has been a participant, it's been through Douglas County. Now at this point in time, we are large enough to where we would have the option to be a direct recipient, but what's being proposed here is still through the county, That's through exactly Douglas right. County, Correct. okay? And just to clarify, even if we opt in and the town council who's sitting at that time, even if nothing else changes from the federal administration or the county administration, if the town council sitting at that time chooses to not receive funds, they are under no obligation to receive those funds for any reason, even though we're, if, if they opted in now. And John may be able to answer that more directly. That's my understanding. And the reason that we are recommending that we go with Douglas County is because of the extreme administrative cost, the extreme liability that we would face potentially if we were to do this on our own. Douglas County already has everything in place to run this program. Okay. John, did you want to elaborate on that? Uh, yes, Mayor, I'm happy to do that. The, the um, having administered this kind of program previously, not here in Parker, but in, in prior positions, it does have a fairly substantial administrative burden in terms of having to hire and train staff to operate it. By partnering with Douglas County, um, the town avoids, gains access to uh, federal monies uh, for eligible projects um, and avoids the need to either hire retrain or do anything with staff and cause additional administrative burden we can rely on the county to take the administrative burden while opening up the community uh, and community organizations to a funding stream from the federal government for grant purposes that may be a benefit to them um, so it's more efficient to do it in this way as opposed to the town uh, if it wanted to taking on the program and having to uh, to staff the function, which is which can be burdensome. I've done it. I will note some of the organizations that in the past, recent past, have applied for and received funds uh, through Douglas County when they were in the CDBG program previously included the Parker Senior Center as well as the Parker Task Force. Parker Senior Center, those funds went to improvements, ADA accessibility, code compliance, and the like. Parker Task Force, it went to their new facility, as well as some of their food and assistance programs. Um, so there are local organizations uh, that would benefit from access to these revenues uh, if, if the town partners with the county, um, and they have used them in the past for, for real projects and real needs. Okay, thank you very much. All right, since this is a public hearing, we're gonna go ahead and open it for public comment at 8.07 p.m. Same situation as the, the previous. Uh, if you would like to speak on this item, you just go ahead and raise your hand, and I'm looking at the attendee list right here. I'll call on you, and then I'll start the timer after you state your name and address for the record. Three minute time limit. So this is your chance. All right. Giving it a little extra time in case you're trying to find the raise your hand button. And I'm not seeing any, so I'm going to go ahead and close public comment at 8.08 .08 p.m. And I would entertain further discussion or a motion, please, on item 10A. Jeff. Jamie, can you just clarify for me? So if we opt into the program and then we say we don't want to take the money, did, did I hear you correctly that we're still bound by the regulations and the guidelines and the goals of the program as it relates to affordable housing and the like? Not specifically the program, but there are still obligations to comply with housing and urban development through the federal government for any municipality. So the specific regulations to the program that we would be bound by by opting in wouldn't apply, but general HUD principles would. Meaning federal fair housing? Correct. Right, and we're bound by those now. We're bound. Yeah. Okay. We, got not up. we have no Cheryl. Options. So if, if we opt in to the agreement with Douglas County and Douglas County is, accepts those funds, what's the ramification back for compliance to Parker? No, nothing if Parker, if we don't take our portion. The money. We submit applications for programs or different projects that we're interested in. And Douglas County reviews those applications based on the consolidated plan that everyone puts together. If those applications are approved, that's when our requirements kick in. 
But if, but if we don't put in anything, if the town of Parker applies for no grants and takes no money, the portion of money from the federal government that was allocated to the town of Parker gets redistributed by Douglas County to the other members in Douglas County. That's my understanding or else it goes back to the federal or, government. Or it goes but, back yeah. to the federal government. Okay. Further discussion or a motion, please? I, approve, I, mean, I move to approve ordinance number 9.318 on second reading. Second. Any seconds? We have a motion from Josh and a second by Renee. She was a little slower on click and unmute, Debbie, sorry. Oh, hey. <laughs> Council, in just a sec, your window's going to pop up. I can't see my site. Motion passes four to two with two no votes from Jeff Toborg and Cheryl Pogue. Next item up is item number 10B. This is ordinance number 3.01.123 on second reading. This is a bill for an ordinance to amend Title 13 of the Parker Municipal Code to add a new section 13.05.015 concerning unauthorized camping in floodplains. Jamie. You're stuck with me again. Gotcha. <laughs> we are asking for council's <laughs> approval in passing a new section to the municipal code 13.05.015. The purpose of this is that the Mile High Flood District engaged in studies and determined that there are a number of areas in the floodplains as well as culverts, drainage storm, storm drains, and all of that where individuals' lives and property are in danger if they are camping in these floodplains. We did take this ordinance to the Planning Commission on June 25th. They did vote to recommend to have the Town Council adopt this ordinance. We are looking at this for purely safety reasons and asking that Town Council adopt this ordinance to prohibit camping in floodplains. Okay. Council, do you have any questions for Jamie? Jim, this doesn't include our open space. Correct. At this point. Unless it's a designated floodplain or there's okay. some other type okay. of culvert or okay. something there. Okay. Other questions? And just to clarify at home, this this term is in, I mean, this is not like I brought my RV and hooked up to shore power and went camping like that. These are floodplain, non-designated camping areas. Correct. Because <laughs> I know, you know, it'll come up. I mean, I'm going to get an email. I love to camp. Why do you like <laughs> camping in Parker? This is specifically camping in areas that are determined to be a safety risk by the Mile High Flood District and for okay. other reasons. Gotcha. All right. We'll go ahead and open it up for public. Uh, Renee, did you have a question? You all of a sudden popped up on the big monitor over here. Okay. We're going to go ahead and open it up for public comment at 8.12 p.m. Same rules as I stated before. I'm looking at the attendee list. We're down to seven. Um, if you would like to make a public comment, go ahead and use your raise your hand feature. Okay. Not seeing any, so we'll close public comment at 8.13 p.m. And I would entertain further discussion or a motion, please. I move to approve ordinance number 3.01.123 on second reading for the sweep. Second. Renee, second. <laughs> we have a motion by Josh and a second by Debbie. Council, please vote. Motion passes unanimously. With no further business before council, we'll adjourn at 8.13 p.m. And everyone watching at home, go wash your hands. Everyone here, <laughs> go wash your hands. Stay safe. And go to the pool. Mm -hmm.